There they crucified him and the male factor, one on his right hand and the other on his left. And for further references, you can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses number 3. But ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. Christ is the answer. Calvary has the cure. If we put our trust in him and look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, we will be able to get past this. And I just want to be in prayer for all of those people who have been diagnosed with this. I want to say to our, our, our mayor, our president, our, our governor, that you're all doing a wonderful job, I believe, with all my heart, that you're trying every way you possibly can to get an answer to this. But last night, as I was reading the Bible, Calvary has the cure. Calvary. After what Jesus done at the cross, there is an answer. Christ died. Jesus Christ died for our sin. And he did it at Calvary. So says the scripture. And Calvary and crucifixion on Calvary is where Jesus Christ died for the sin of this world. And let me say this, Jesus was a sinless man. He was a man that had no sin in him. But all of the sins of the world was upon him. He was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. One lamb must die for the whole world. And I just believe if we put our trust and faith in him, God will see us through. Dr. Robert G. E. Lee, one of the great writers of our time, he, he wrote a book, and in the book he said, he began like this. He said, for that reason of the crucifixion at Calvary, he said, greatly above and beyond all mountains, and Calvary. Calvary stands out why? It's because Jesus Christ paid the sin debt. And if you're looking at John chapter 19 and verses number 30, it says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Calvary, great is Mount Sinai. Sinai that was sublime in solitude. It was robed in clouds. It was shrouded in smoke, illuminated with fire, with heaven earthquake, thunders rumbling, lightning blazing in zigzag paths across the dark bosom of the cloud. Oh yes, we can have an Easter Sunday. We, we, we may not be what we can get out, but we can give God the praises and why is because he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. Something happened that day. That was that was that was that was the earth darkest day. From the sixth to the ninth hour, there was a darkness that covered the whole earth. The sun, the veil of the temple, ripped in the midst, and Jesus Christ died for our sin. But let me tell you, one of his most remarkable converts was there at the cross. One was on his right hand and the other was on his left. The Bible calls them male factors. Sometimes we said thieves, but one of them looked at him and said, if you are the Christ, if you are who you say you are, then save yourself and us. But the other answer in him said, Look at you, look at you, rebuke, rebuke you. He said, this man have not done nothing. He said, that lives, but we indeed, justly, he said, we've done wrong, and we do the reward of our deeds. But my brothers and my sisters, he looked over at Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. When thou comest into thy kingdom, that day at Calvary, he saw Jesus more than just an ordinary man. He actually saw him as a king getting ready to go to his kingdom. 
And Jesus looked over him and said, today. That's what I love about him. We need him today. 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 Thou shalt be with me in paradise. And he, and he, and he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. And I, I know you read the story. And I'm getting on down towards Easter. But they, they, they took him down from that cross. The veil of the temple was rent and lightning, thunder, rumbling, and lightning blazing and zigzag paths across the dark bosom of the clouds. But the Savior of the world, he died. Jesus died. But he's not dead today. He's alive and he's well. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. And we call that Easter Sunday morning. But anyway, when he got up, he got up not with some power, but all power was in his hand. And he had power over this Roman disease that, 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 that's covering the land and claiming the lives of men. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, Try for them wicked ways. Seek my face and pray. He said, then will I hear from heaven and I heal their land. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus had risen from the dead, Mary, Mary Magdalene went to the sepulchre to check on it. The soldiers marched all around there. But you can't stop a man like that. That's the man we need. That's what we all got to call on him. We got to call him in the morning. We got to call him all during the day. Call him in the midnight hour. He got up from that grave with all power in his hand. And I love this step. When he, they call it the Great Commission. When Jesus, he, when he, when he had his last meeting with his disciples and he told them, I want you to do a work. He said, I want you to go into all of the world and preach the gospel, baptizing people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and, and of the Holy Ghost and teach them to observe. We got to observe, ladies and gentlemen. God is putting things in perspective. We don't know when he could be setting a new world order. Amen. God has all power in his hand. He got up from that grave. And I want to say this here. Mom used to tell us on Easter Sunday morning. And I don't know why she would say it, but she said, get up and let's look at the sun shot. And we would look at that moon and look like something would be trickling from it. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think I do. I believe in my spirit. Do you believe that he rose from the dead with all power in his Hand and went on back home to his father and sat down at the right hand of him in the kingdom. But my brothers and sisters, let me say this. Be of good courage. He said, he said, I, I, I would not have you to be a fearless person. Be careful, but just know that I'm going to be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Somebody took a pen out one time and wrote a song, Were You Bad? When they crucified my Lord, were you there when the blood come streaming down and begin to ooze in and out of the skin? But were you there when he rose from the dead? My brothers and sisters, I stand before you today and believe in my heart that God is going to wipe this thing out and send it back to the pit of hell where it belongs. If we believe in him who who got the weight of the world. It ain't that the world got away from him. It ain't. This virus hadn't taken him by surprise. He's an all-knowing God. And he had the world in his hand. And we must believe in him. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. God bless you. And I want to say this to you. As you go throughout this day, praise God. Have a personal revival. You can have a revival of your own self. Go in that room, go in that sleeping closet, go down to your knees and pray and tell God thank you, even at a time like this. My daughter's gonna come sing for you now. Miss Andrew Thomas.
Keep on going. And some of you didn't get to make it, but the Lord blessed us, and we're doing real good. He has not left us yet, and because we live, let God have faith. We can face the ball. God bless you. Happy Easter.